What is up everybody, I'm the Universal Gamer, taking a look at games from every single generation. Now, today we're going to be taking a look at a little fighting game known as Mortal Kombat. Now, if you've watched my last few reviews, you know that I review games that I consider to be underrated or just games people have forgotten. But with Mortal Kombat, I feel like it can make an exception since the latest game, Mortal Kombat X, has hit the scene and people might just have forgotten about this game or it might not be looked at as before. So, in celebration of Mortal Kombat, let's get started. How do I even begin to introduce this series? You know it, I know it, but I gotta do it. Mortal Kombat has been around for over 20 years and has never ceased to amaze gamers the world over. With excess violence, unique characters, and an expansive lore to a universe that you can truly get lost in. I honestly don't think that I have to say that Mortal Kombat was a game changer with a hardcore fan base. In fact, the Mortal Kombat fan base is so hardcore, I fear for my life and what I'm about to say about this game. And not only that, but the game was innovative, being the first successful game to use digitized actors. Not the first, but the first successful one. Now let me get one thing straight before I get this game started by saying that I like this game and this franchise. I mean, Deadly Alliance was my first Mortal Kombat experience with the series, and I played the game non-stop with my cousin, sister, father, friends, and I think that if it wasn't for Mortal Kombat, I wouldn't be into fighting games as much as I am now. Well, maybe for Super Smash Bros. 2, but Mortal Kombat mainly. And even though I said this series is amazing, it's not without its faults. There have definitely been some terrible games in this series, or more missteps, I should say. Games like Armageddon, Mythologies, even DC Universe, which wasn't that bad, but I gotta count it since they nerfed the fatalities and the violence. So for now, I just want to take you all back before Mortal Kombat was one of the biggest fighting franchises with 20 plus games in the roster. Let's take a look at the original game and see if it still holds the passage of time. The story for Mortal Kombat is so standard and bare bones that it might as well not be there. But you know, I can't really hold this against the game since it was intended as a quarter sucking arcade fighter. I mean, you listen to the documentary about the game, Ed Boon said this game was a quick project. The story takes place in Earthrealm, where the mo tournament Mortal Kombat is being held and seven warriors are called to fight with their own purpose for being there. If Earthrealm's warriors lose the tournament, everything shall fall, and the realm will belong to Otherworld, and the dark sorcerer Shang Tsung. Who of course we learn is only a minion to Lord Shao Kahn who you fight in Mortal Kombat 2. And there really isn't anything else to it. I give the game credit for trying, and it set a foundation for the rest of the series, but really, on its own, it's completely forgetful. But even though the story is as bare bones as it can be, they still managed to create some unique and interesting characters, and that is one thing that has stood throughout all of Mortal Kombat. So given that, let's talk about the characters. Mortal Kombat features seven playable characters. You got Kano, Liu Kang, Sonya, Raiden, Sub-Zero, Scorpion, and last but certainly not least, you got Johnny Cage. Funny story though, Johnny Cage is actually a spoof of Jean-Claude Van Damme. And we'll get to that in greater detail later. Now don't let this low roster of characters throw you off because each one is very different from the last, with the exception of Scorpion and Sub-Zero who share the same design. But each one has their own set of special moves and best of all, their own fatalities which is the thing that really sells this game. The designs of your enemies are very interesting as well, even though there's only two enemies. They look awesome. Shang Tsung looks evil as he can be, and he's sort of a ripoff of the Emperor from Star Wars. And Goro, <laughs> he's just a badass. I mean, he's a four-armed beast that will rip you limb from limb if he gets the chance. Now, what would any fighting game be without an excellent combat system? Well, you'd be Armageddon or mythologies, or special forces. Anyway, let's move on. The combat system for the original is nothing short of classic. You use the D-pad to move back and forth and also jump while using the X, Y, B, and A buttons for your high and low attacks. To block your enemies, use the left and right triggers. But it doesn't stop there. In order to add some depth, they gave every single character special moves unique to that character. Like Liu Kang can do a flying kick and throw fireballs, Johnny can throw green goo and does the ultimate crotch shot. And I gotta mention Scorpion special, or better yet, 
I'll just show you. Oh my god. That is epic. Now, when I came back to this game, I thought maybe there would be a slight learning curve like old games, but not too bad. Boy, was I wrong. This game is still hard as shit. And I mean, like, legit hard. You gotta practice your special moves, time your punches and jumps if you expect to make it past the fourth fighter. And even when working on all that, the game gets even harder when introducing the one versus two player matches, which forces you to kill two opponents with one health bar. Twice. I honestly wasn't prepared for this game and I had to practice for a few hours just getting up to Goro, which took another few attempts to beat him and Shang Tsung. But that's not all they got. Aside from the 1-2 to two fights, they've thrown in a few button masher test minigames, which is pretty famous in Mortal Kombat nowadays. All you have to do is just mash one button and then it'll um, test your might and see if you break the log or not. I've personally never been good at this game. And finally, there's the fatalities, undeniably the coolest thing about this game. Once you defeated your opponent, the game will say, finish him, and you will given a few seconds to either hit them and finish the fight, or enter a special combination which will make your character do an insane execution. I mean, pick one, Sub-Zero rips your spine out, Sonya gives the kiss of death, Scorpion burns you alive, it is so cool. I can't remember another fighting game that did that before Mortal Kombat. So, gameplay, while challenging, I'll admit, is solid. It is just 100% as solid as it can be in an old school game. And even though I'm playing the Super Nintendo port, there is really no difference between this, the Genesis, or the arcade version. Well, unless you're a super hardcore fan, you really won't notice the difference. And hey, impressive gameplay isn't the only thing this thing has to offer. The level designs for this game are pretty cool, I gotta admit. Some of these levels are totally badass. I think we all have the spite pit level pierced into our brains like a spear through the chest. It's just something you don't forget. When you uppercut somebody into a giant spike and watch that body fly, ugh, it's beautiful. But that's not to say the rest of the levels are slouches. Most are very creative and have simple designs. Some are dark, others ominous. Then there are the spike pit. There's one level where you fight right in front of Shang Tsung for his amusement, and another where you fight in a hall of statues where you see all the heroes and enemies of Earthrealm. Plus, standing right in the middle is your worst nightmare, the four-armed demon, Goro. I guess the best way to say how varied the levels get is to compare the first level with one of the later levels. The first arena you fight in is a classic tournament setup. You're on the ring facing your opponent with a lively audience, even a few guards watching in a very creepy yin and yang fox mask. It's very cool, simple, and sets the mood for the hyper violence. Now compare this to a later level, the dungeon, an arena filled with bones, cages filled with monsters whose eyes gleam at you in the background, rats that move around an infested floor and you're stuck there with another fighter wanting your blood. And I know it sounds like I'm building up such a simplistic fighter, but I gotta give credit where credit it's due. And this is just another reason why this game kicks so much ass. You feel the intensity and what the stakes are. It's you or him. Fight or die. When you talk about the music for Mortal Kombat, you immediately want to hear the theme from the movie. Hell, I'd play it for you if somebody wouldn't try to sue me. Since that isn't an option, let's just talk about the one in the game. It's good. It definitely fits the mood for each level and the intense feeling of a one-on-one -on -one clash. Now, I'm not saying that the soundtrack is crazy, balls out heavy metal, I'm just saying it fits the game's tone. And there really isn't much else I can say about the music, so before we get right into the history, let's move on to the problems I have with this game. Now, hold on, okay? They're minor, but this game, like all games, has its own set of issues. Well, as for problems I had with the game, there really aren't many. For one thing, the character roster is poor. I mean, there's only seven characters, and two of them look the same. And the only other thing is the difficulty. This game is a pain in the ass starting off. You will die so many times, especially on the higher difficulties. But when you do finally win, it feels so rewarding, like, yes, I earned that. So it's not really too bad, it's not even really a complaint, it's just something I needed to say. So with nothing else to say about it, let's dive right into the history. The history of Mortal Kombat is very interesting in how simple the whole project was set to be and ended up becoming a smash hit. 
The game was developed by Midway Games in 92 and started out as a small project by four people, Ed Boon, John Tobias, John Vogel, and Dan Forden. Hopefully I got those names right. Basically, they are the fathers of the franchise. Boone and Tobias were originally asked to do a game adaption for the movie Universal Soldier starring Van Damme, but Boone and the others were quoted to say that they wanted to make a game a lot more hard edge like Enter the Dragon or Bloodsport. But unfortunately, their license for Bloodsport fell through, but they still wanted to make a game like that, and that's where Mortal Kombat comes in. And they still decided to use Van Damme's image as the build for Johnny Cage. Now as for the name, why Mortal Kombat? Why K and not C in the combat? Well, apparently they were discussing a lot of names for the game, like Kumite, or Kumite, Death Blow, Dragon Attack, or my favorite, Fatality. Yeah, the game was going to be called Fatality at one point. Now, combat with C came up at one point, and for some reason, somebody wrote a K over the C, and Boone said it just stuck. And the rest is history. In the end, Mortal Kombat is still an amazing fighting game. Now, not everything about it has aged well enough that I can recommend it, but hey, need I remind you, there are 19 other games in the series, so one of these is bound to pique your interest. Now, Mortal Kombat is available on pretty much every single console, the 360, the PS3, the Saturn, the Sega Genesis, the SNES, you name it, I think you get the point. Pick up whichever version that you like. And in the end, I'll give Mortal Kombat a 7 out of 10. I'll see you guys next time.